talk a little bit about sort of the jobless recovery and how this kind of uh, monitoring and attention to what workers are doing is perhaps contributing to that? Well, I think a big point of intersection, as I just alluded to, um, for me is just that we have this period, certainly in the United States, uh, you know, this prolonged period where there were so many long-term unemployed and even bigger number of people who were underemployed, working part-time involuntarily. And so people would just take any job. There was no pressure to make the jobs tenable. So this is the exact time period. It, it, it coincides exactly with the rise of these electronic scheduling systems. So you develop something where, like retail, this massive changeover from full-time to part-time work at a time when you have millions upon millions of people willing to say yes to anything. Okay, 10 hours of work, 12 hours of work, on-call shifts, whatever. Just give me like two dimes to rub together, right? And so I think there, there's, there hasn't been any counter pressure to make jobs livable, to make jobs attractive to people, to make jobs even deliver enough hours, given that some of these are very low wage jobs, in order to survive. Um, I think as the job market tightens slightly, you know, we're just beginning to see a little bit of responsiveness. So we have, you know, just in the last six months, there are several retailers, excuse me, I think led by The Gap and Abercrombie and & Fitch that have decided to eliminate these, on, at least these on-call only shifts, mm -hmm. where you're just supposed to be waiting by the phone, not getting paid, you can't go do anything. You have to have child care for your kids, but you may or may not even get, I mean, the, the, the most abusive piece of this is start, there's starting to be a group of companies that are pledging to eliminate that, but it's baby steps. How, can you give us a sense of how ubiquitous these monitoring systems are? Because obviously not every retailer or every store either can afford or even every chain would necessarily make, be making this investment. Can we draw comparisons between those? I think that the surveillance stuff is pretty much ubiquitous at this point. There's, there was a management association in the United States that used to be tracking this, sort of starting in the 90s. Every few years they would do an annual survey of how many companies are monitoring email, how many are monitoring internet use, and all that kind of stuff. And, and it, it started climbing up into the 60s and 70s percent in 2005 and they stopped doing the survey and no one else has done that survey since. But I mean, think about where we were with technology in 2005 and it was already, the monitoring was already there, yeah. you know, already, you know, two thirds, three quarters of workplaces. So I, I kind of assume, especially since we, again, we don't have to be notified. You, if, 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 if management is looking in at your web use, you do not have to be notified. Some workplaces do put an alert up People have maybe seen that on computer screens before, but you do not have to be notified. So I think we, sh we should function assuming that this is universal.